um, we, we, I rise in support of the resolution. Uh, and I know that uh, all of us have an opportunity to go around our districts and around the state, and we're often asked to, to discuss our state's challenges. And I'm happy to do that, talk about our budget and all, all the challenges before us. But I also always remind people of our greatest asset here in California. We have amassed here in California 40 million people. We are the most diverse people assembled in one place in the history of this world. Uh, I stand here as, with my parents, uh, as I've mentioned many times in front of all of you, of Latino and Asian descent, and I think the first person in the history of the of this California legislature to have to be of uh, biracial background and serve in two ethnic caucuses quite proudly. But I also emphasize that I will not be the last. Uh, we stand here also not only to celebrate our diversity, but to honor the civil rights movement. Uh, those of us that are people of color, not just African Americans, but Asians and Latinos, we all stand on the shoulders of the great civil rights leaders and heroes, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Stokely Carmichael, Thurgood Marshall, and I think our own hero that served in these very chambers, the first African American lieutenant governor of this great state, Mr. Merv Dimley, who will honor later. We stand on all of your shoulders for the work and the struggles that have been done. And finally, I think we stand here to commemorate a great change in this country. In my household, we had a very interesting primary season for the president, uh, for the Democratic nomination. My son, early and often, was an Obama supporter. And he was very vocal about that, and he put the signs up on, on, in the windows. My daughter, however, was a Hillary supporter. And I think that that shows us how far we've come as a country, that, that my kids can look to an African American as a potential nominee. My daughter can look to a woman as possibly the next president. And all of us can look to our speaker as the first African American woman to be a speaker. So it's, it does show us how far we've come. And I'll just say this. Um, I often close my speeches reminding people that every day across this great country of ours in schoolhouses and in courthouses and in assembly and legislatures all over this country, we, we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. And at the end of that pledge, we say a very simple phrase, with liberty and justice for all. And I think for a long time, many of us just said that because we had memorized and we've said it since we were kids without giving it a second thought, and maybe even thinking, maybe in our lifetime we're not even going to be able to talk about liberty and justice for all. I think today, and with the election of the new president, and with the work that we do here, we are getting every day closer and closer to allowing every American and every Californian to fulfill their God-given potential, and to really say with real meaning, with liberty and justice for all.